हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू येट अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ मेडिसिन पीवाईक्यू टॉपिक सीरीज एंड द एपिसोड 17 आई हैव चोजन इज एसिड बेस्ड डिसऑर्डर्स दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड अ वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क्ड टॉपिक इन द नीट पीजी एग्जाम्स एंड यू कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू मिस दिस टॉपिक विद एग्जाम्स अप्रोचिंग नियर आई वांटेड टू टच दिस टॉपिक बिकॉज़ एवरी ईयर यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट एट लीस्ट टू क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक एंड इफ यू कैन गेट देम राइट यू हैव एट मार्क्स इन योर बैग सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी मेनली डिस्कसिंग द ट्रिक्स टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन and how to approach such questions uh, so that you can at least attempt these questions in exams we will not be discussing in detail so let's get started so these were the pyq questions which came in the exams as you can see these questions were repeated many times in uh, almost every year and we'll come back to this question once we go through the topic quickly so let's get started so acid based disorders so to know this topic we should know first the normal values which is very important to remember so you have to remember these values uh, one is ph levels one is pco2 one is bicarbonate and one is pao2 of which practical use is of ph pco2 and bicarbonate the normal values of ph is 7.35 to 7.45 pco2 is 35 to 40 mm mercury bicarbonate is 22 to 26 mL equivalent per liter and anything below 7.35 is acidosis anything above 7.45 is alkalosis now on the right hand side you can see the equation where base is the bicarbonate acid is the carbon dioxide anything related to bicarbonate is a metabolic process and anything related to carbon dioxide is a respiratory process which we will be talking more about in this video so there are certain rules which you should keep in mind before attempting such questions and these are the rules i'll keep on explaining them as well so number 1 in simple acid based disorders always the primary change and compensation move together number 2 in respiratory disorder the change in ph with respect to carbon dioxide and bicarbonate is in opposite direction and in primary metabolic disorder change in ph with respect to carbon dioxide and bicarbonate is in equal direction that is the same direction so by first rule we mean carbon dioxide and bicarbonate whatever is the primary change they move together and whether it is a respiratory disorder or metabolic disorder it is decided with its relation to the ph and it can be remembered with this mnemonic ROME that is rome a very famous mnemonic so for respiratory disorders the carbon dioxide and bicarbonate they go opposite direction with respect to the ph hence respiratory and opposite and metabolic disorders the carbon dioxide and bicarbonate they go in the same direction or the equal direction with respect to ph hence m and e so that becomes a mnemonic we will be discussing with example so it becomes more clear the same thing we discussed uh, the rome mnemonic now coming to approach the first thing we need to see is the ph whether the ph is less than 7.35 or it is more than 7.45 if it is less than 7.35 we know it is acidosis and if it is more than 7.45 we know it is alkalosis now once we decide it is acidosis or alkalosis then we decide whether the process is metabolic or a respiratory the primary disorder if it is metabolic generally the compensatory is respiratory similarly if the primary is respiratory the compensatory is metabolic and we decide whether it is a metabolic or respiratory with the help of the mnemonic rome and we see the direction of co2 and bicarbonate change with respect to the ph we will understand with the help of these examples so first one here the ph is 7.32 so it is less than 7.35 it is acidosis now whether it is a respiratory acidosis or a metabolic acidosis we will see carbon dioxide is increasing because normal is 35 to 40 and bicarbonate is also increasing because normal is 22 to 26 so here both carbon dioxide and bicarbonate is going hand in hand and ph is going down so you can see direction of change of carbon dioxide and bicarbonate is opposite to the ph hence it is a respiratory disorder so it is a respiratory acidosis coming to the second example first we'll see the ph here it is 7.48 which is more than 7.45 so it is alkalosis now if we see the direction of carbon dioxide and bicarbonate both are reducing and it is again opposite to the direction of ph so again it is a respiratory process so respiratory alkalosis coming to the third example ph here is low that is 7.29 carbon dioxide is low and bicarbonate is also low and if you see the direction of change is same with respect to ph hence it is a metabolic process so it is a metabolic acidosis and the last example first always the ph so it is 7.52 which is more than 7.45 so it is a alkalosis and if you see the carbon dioxide and bicarbonate it is again increased and also same direction with respect to ph so it is a metabolic process hence it is metabolic alkalosis i hope with these examples 
it becomes much simpler how to decide whether it is a acidosis or alkalosis and whether it is a respiratory process or a metabolic process once you identify the first step whether it is a acidosis and alkalosis and then you can decide whether it is a respiratory or metabolic process it becomes way simpler and you can attempt 90% of the questions now coming to the compensation formula you should have just a little idea about this because uh, one or two questions have been asked from this area as well so if the disorder is respiratory acidosis so for that compensation is for every 10 mm mercury rise in carbon dioxide bicarbonate rise by 1 milli equivalent in acute process and 4 milli equivalent in chronic process similarly in respiratory alkalosis for every 10 mm fall in carbon dioxide bicarbonate fall by 2 milli equivalent in acute and 4 milli equivalent in chronic this is a golden statement for respiratory acidosis and alkalosis this is the compensation coming to metabolic process uh, for metabolic acidosis, there is a Winters formula where expected carbon dioxide, that is if bicarbonate is low, what is the expected carbon dioxide? It can be calculated by 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 plus minus 2. And for metabolic alkalosis, expected carbon dioxide is just bicarbonate plus the 15. Now we will apply this formula with the help of an example so that it becomes more clear. So for example 1, here the pH is given 7.33, pCO2 is given 60 and bicarbonate is given 34. And a small history is given, patient is a known case of chronic neuromuscular disorder. Now already it has been given, it is a chronic process. And if you see the pH, it is 7.33, so it is acidosis. And if you see the direction of change of PCO2 and bicarbonate, it is increased. So it is opposite to the direction of pH, hence it is respiratory process. So respiratory acidosis is established. Now we will see whether the compensation is adequate or it is less or more. So for carbon dioxide, we see it has risen from 40, that is upper limit to 60. So there is a 20 rise. So expected bicarbonate with the help of the formula. So now if you see the statement for every 10 millimeter rise in carbon dioxide, bicarbonate should rise by 4 milli equivalent in chronic process. Here, the rise is 20, so it should rise by 8. If you see, the bicarbonate has risen to 34 from 26, so it is well compensated. So that is one example. Coming to second example, here the pH is 7.29, PCO2 is 22 and bicarbonate is 10. So pH is less, so it is acidosis. PCO2 and bicarbonate both are less and in the direction same as pH. So it's a metabolic process. Now we know it's a metabolic acidosis. For metabolic acidosis, we always apply Winters formula where expected carbon dioxide calculated with the help of this formula. And if we put the values, we get 1.5 into 10 plus 8 plus minus 2. So it comes down to 23 plus minus 2, which is ranging from 21 to 25 millimeter mercury. And if you see the PCO2 is 22, so it is well within the range. So it is well compensated. This is how you know whether the compensatory mechanism is well compensated or is it not? Because if it is not well compensated, they underlies another process, which could be an acidosis or alkalosis. And this is important in mixed acid based disorders, which can be asked sometimes in the NEET PG exams. They are more frequently asked in INICT, but since it has been asked once or twice in NEET PG, we cannot skip this part. Moving forward, one more concept, anion gap, which you should know. So anion gap is calculated with this formula, sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. These all values will be given in the question. You just have to put the values and you have to find what is the value. For normal anion gap, it is 8 to 12 milli equivalent and anything more than 12 is high anion gap. Why high anion gap is important because there are certain causes which can be given in the question. So causes are most common are toxins like aspirin and methanol, ketoacidosis of which diabetic ketoacidosis is the most common cause, and lactic acidosis and renal failure and CKD patients generally have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So this is important as this can be asked as direct questions or if a history is given of a patient of CKD and there are two options of metabolic acidosis and high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So better answer would be high anion gap metabolic acidosis. That's why the concept of anion gap is important here. Lastly, the causes. So why this causes is important. There are a list of causes, but you should just know the important ones because this will again be given as uh, clues or history in the question and regardless of the values you should always follow the history because it is depicting towards certain disorder which you cannot miss now coming to metabolic acidosis the important causes are ketoacidosis lactic acidosis chronic renal failure or ckd and certain toxications like salicyclate methanol formaldehyde then diarrhea and renal tubular acidosis are certain causes of metabolic acidosis coming to metabolic alkalosis vomiting hyperaldosteronism loop or thiazide diuretics then respiratory acidosis causes like opiates 
सीडेटिव्स एनेस्थेसिया जीबीएस पोलियो एयरवे ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन ए आर डी एस सी ओ पी डी एंड लास्टली रेस्पिरेटरी एल्कालोसिस लाइक न्यूमोनिया पलमोनरी एम्बोलिज्म हाई एल्टीट्यूड दैन साइकोजेनिक दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हिस्ट्री वेर पेनिक अटैक्स एंड पेशेंट हाइपर वेंटिलेटिंग एंड सब विथ रेस्पिरेटरी एल्कोलोसिस वेर दे आर वॉशिंग आउट लॉट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड देन हाइपर वेंटिलेशन अगेन सेम थिंग और इट कैन बी मैकेनिकल हाइपर वेंटिलेशन सो दीज आर सर्टन कॉजेस विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड विल बी गिवेन एस क्लूज इन द क्वेश्चन Now let us go back to the questions and we'll try to attempt them and then this entire concept will become more clear. So the first question a male patient presents to emergency department and the ABG report is given where pH is 7.2 PCO2 is 81 bicarbonate is 40 which of the following is most likely diagnosis. So if you see first we have to always focus on pH. So if you see the pH here it is 7.2 so it is reduced. So it is acidosis. automatically respiratory alkalosis and metabolic alkalosis rules out now we are left with metabolic or respiratory we have to decide which process it is now if you see the pco2 and bicarbonate they both are increased and they are opposite to the direction of the ph so if it is opposite we know it is respiratory if we remember the formula rome rome the respiratory is opposite so here the answer is respiratory acidosis i hope now it becomes very simple where always you first have to identify the ph and then the change which is happening in which direction and then you can identify the process also you have to see the history of the patient or the clinical clues if given any now coming to our second question a woman with hysteria who was hyperventilating developed carpo pedal spasm what could be the likely cause for this now we saw again the history uh, history is important we just saw the causes like a woman with hysteria means a uh, panic attack and hyperventilating is pointing towards a respiratory alkalosis just from the history but we have to again rule out the causes so we know hyperventilating patient will have a vast shot of carbon dioxide so the acid is going out so it cannot be acidosis so metabolic and respiratory is ruled out and carbon dioxide wash out is mainly the primary disorder here so it will be a respiratory alkalosis rather than a metabolic alkalosis so the best answer here is respiratory alkalosis and also the history is giving developed carpo pedal spasm so in alkalosis there is always more binding of calcium to the albumin so the calcium goes down hence the patient presents with symptoms of hypocalcemia i hope this question is clear now and why the answer is respiratory alkalosis coming to next question a diabetic woman presents to emergency with abdominal discomfort nausea and vomiting she gives a history of consuming food from outside on evaluation her bp is 90 by 60 a uh, abg report shows following findings what is the cause of her abg findings so if you see the abg findings it is being given ph is 7.52 bicarbonate is 30 pco2 is 20 sodium is 123 potassium is 3.2 and chloride is 67 so from the ph we know it is a alkalosis so diabetic ketoacidosis and renal tubular acidosis rules out coming to the other findings of electrolytes sodium is low potassium is low chloride is low also there is hypovolemia so it is hypovolemic hypokalemic and hypochloremic alkalosis which points towards persisting vomiting if it had been septic shock there would have been history of certain fever or tachycardia since these are not given in the history so the best answer here is persistent vomiting which is the cause of our abg findings come to the fourth question middle aged man with chronic renal failure on dialysis presents with sudden collapse to casualty with labored breathing so they have given a hi- important history where it is ckd patient Uh, then ecg shows tall tented t waves what is the most likely acid base imbalance that can be seen in this patient now uh, that is why history is important if we know that ckd patient generally have acidosis we can easily rule out where the options are of alkalosis so now we know in ckd patients they are having acidosis so option c and option d automatically rules out and we know generally in ckd there is metabolic process so we have to see now the change of pco2 and bicarbonate and the direction with respect to ph so if we see in option a the ph is less pco2 is less and bicarbonate is also less and the direction of change is same so this looks like metabolic let us also see the option b here the ph is less pco2 is less but bicarbonate is going up and this is not matching so option a looks the best answer so option a is the answer here which is metabolic acidosis coming to the next question the abg analysis findings of a patient are given as follows ph is 7.3 bicarbonate is 10 pco2 is 30 
which is suggestive of a partially compensated metabolic acidosis. What is the mechanism for secondary disorder? As per the pH, we know it is a metabolic acidosis and if we apply the winter formula, so the PCO2 should have been between 21 to 25 because it is 1.5 into bicarbonate, that is 1.5 into 10, 15 plus 8 plus minus 2. So it should have been 23 plus minus 2, that is 21 to 25, but it is 30, so it is partially compensated metabolic acidosis. So they are asking what is the mechanism for secondary disorder. So that means what is the disorder that has led to the rise in PCO2. That's why this compensation formula I discussed because that was important. Now if we see why carbon dioxide would have increased. So this is a very uh, basic understanding that it should have increased because the carbon dioxide washout has been decreased. It is retaining in the body of the patient. That's why the PCO2 has increased. So if we go with the options the options are hypoventilation causing decreased carbon dioxide washout hyperventilation causing increased carbon dioxide washout increased tubular reabsorption of bicarbonate increased excretion of h plus now since we know the secondary disorder is the respiratory process so option c and option d rules out coming to option a and b we know if there is hyperventilation with causing increased carbon dioxide washout it could it would have been completely compensated but since here it is partially compensated that means certain amount of carbon dioxide retained back so hypoventilation causing decreased carbon dioxide washout is the best answer here since there is minimal carbon dioxide washout so pco2 has risen and has led to partially compensated metabolic acidosis coming to last question a 55 year old male present with tachypnea and mental confusion and his blood sugar is 350 milligram per deciliter pH is 7.2, bicarbonate is 10, PCO2 is 30. What is the metabolic abnormality? A very simple question, straightforward question. And if we just see the pH, it is 7.2, so it is acidosis. So options having alkalosis is ruled out. If we see bicarbonate PCO2 levels, both have come down and both are in the same direction with respect to pH, hence it's a metabolic process. Hence the best answer here is metabolic acidosis. Also, if you see from the history, you can predict that it's a metabolic acidosis because it looks something like diabetic ketoacidosis with tachypnea, mental confusion, a very high blood sugar with the ABG picture of acidosis, it is depicting towards DKA. So from the history and clinical features also, you can predict the type of metabolic abnormality. So I hope guys with the help of these questions and examples, this topic is clear and you won't make mistakes in attempting such questions because if you see so many questions have come in the past years, finally just quickly revise it. Always first the pH should be looked. Once acidosis or alkalosis is established, we always see the direction of change of bicarbonate and PCO2 which goes hand in hand. If it is in the same direction, it is a metabolic process. If it is in the opposite direction, it is a respiratory process. With this, I hope you will be able to attempt these questions if it comes in the exams. And uh, till then, keep studying, keep revising. I will see you in the next episode. Cheers.